Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss um, how to apply a geospatial AI or machine learning supervised classification uh, to generate a language land cover map um, using uh, satellite data, Landsat satellite data. We're going to be using the Google Earth Engine cloud computing um, uh, service and the Earth Engine um, service has two APIs to communicate with the Earth Engine servers. Uh, the JavaScript API, which is the, um, you know, normal, uh, you know, API where you can interact with the Earth Engine servers and the Python API uh, to communicate with the Earth Engine servers. So today we're going to be using the Python API to run our um, machine learning, um, you know, classification algorithm to generate or predict a land cover um, map. So uh, we're going to be converting this Landsat ROM satellite image into um, a land use land cover map. So let's get started. So we're going to use a Collab uh, notebook. Um, and so the first thing is we're importing the uh, Google Earth Engine uh, library. Um, which is already installed on Collab, so we're gonna import EE and also import GMAP um, for you know mapping and visualization. So um, I've already executed this, uh, and then to initialize, initialize you know your project, uh, you need to create a um, uh, an Earth Engine product or on a project on your um, um, cloud uh, console environment. Uh, there is a separate tutorial to you know to do that. Um, so so once you initialize Earth Engine, uh, we're gonna create a region of interest here. Um, so latitude and longitude information. This is just to kind of um, zoom into a specific you know location. Um, that way, since we're dealing with a planetary scale or big um, you know geospatial data, we wanna. Zoom into a specific location uh, that will save us a lot of computation and um, uh, resource. So we're gonna use the Landsat um, collection to um, data, uh, Landsat eight. So before we're gonna pull that that um, Landsat eight uh, image collection, we're gonna create a, a scale factor. Um, so. Most satellite products uh, are stored as integers to save uh, storage space. So, um, you, you know, the, most of the the, the products um, um, will have um, scale factor uh, and offset. So what we're doing here is just applying that to convert it to a floating point. So uh, this function applies scale factor, converts um, the image integer into a uh, floating point by applying scale factor here for the optical bands and the terminal bands separately. And then um, that function returns the image with the, um, uh, the, the floating point data. So we're gonna call this function here in our image collection as you can see here. And so this is the image collection, the Landsat 8 um, image collection. We're gonna filter it um, in this exercise. We're gonna use uh, data for 2017. So we're gonna use filter date. So filter date will filter the data by timestamp. And in addition, uh, filter bounds also kind of subset the data to our region of interest, which is our ROI here. And again, apply the scale factor here to convert uh, the data into floating points. And then sort by cloud. In this case, just um, it's a simplistic approach. What we're doing here is just sort, you know, cloud metadata, and then pick the first one, which is the cloud-free image. Uh, for most big projects, this is not going to be the case because you you might need multiple scenes. Then in that case, it's a different function or approach. But for this demonstration, this should be, um, you know, good enough. Uh, to generate a cloud-free image. And the other thing is, in addition to the, the Landsat bunch, we're gonna have uh, a normalized difference vegetation index and also um, uh, MNDWI to, um, you know, um, identify vegetation cover as well as water body here uh, with these two indices. 
and this is the formula that we're using uh, to convert the Landsat image here into uh, VI and um, you know water water detection index here. So we'll have two uh, indices here, the NDVI and then the MNDWI. Uh, it's gonna this function generates uh, a, a random name, so we're gonna rename it specifically to the um, uh, the respective spectral index. So we're gonna combine the Landsat image here with this is the image. We're gonna combine the the Landsat raw data uh, with the NDVI and MNDWI here. That way, we're gonna use this in our model later later. And let's just also load the um, you know Landsat data here. So we're gonna create a um, visualization parameter here, the Landsat bands that we wanna visualize, and you know min max values, and then map g map will just give us um, you know map canvas here, something like the the JavaScript API um, you know map canvas on the main Earth Engine um, dashboard. And map center object to adjust the zoom level here and then so we can go ahead and execute this and so what this gives us is uh, uh, you know actually we can map call map here to display um, the the satellite image here so we're gonna you know load the satellite image here this is a Landsat 8 satellite data for this scene uh, which is uh, pretty good cloud free. So we're gonna convert this using supervised classification, random force classification. This uh, raw image based on training labels um, of land cover class uh, from sample points within this image. And we're gonna generate um, a, a land use land cover map for, for the entire study area, uh, map for the entire study area. Okay, so the next thing is we're gonna use, um, in this case, we're not gonna manually generate training data, rather we're gonna use a training data which is already existing from the ISRI uh, land cover map, which is already existing. So we're gonna use the 2017 uh, you know, ISRI land cover map. Uh, and then we're gonna do some adjustments here. We're gonna remap the, um, because the, 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 the values here are not consecutive, so we're gonna remap uh, this, um, you know, data values into consecutive uh, one to nine. Uh, and then also rename the, the band, land cover back band to LC, uh, which we're gonna use um, as our label in the land cover classification or in our model, okay? So we're gonna execute this. So we're gonna print, um, you know, get info to understand what is existing in this data set, you know, um, you know, coordinate system, data type, you know, ID and whatnot. So, um, and then as I said, because we have remapped it, you know, now the data range is from one to nine. And this is our label for the machine learning classification and also a list of bands. Uh, so this list stores the, the bands, the Landsat bands and also the NDVI and uh, MNDWI for vegetation and water detection. Um, and we're gonna generate, so we have the image here. So the image here stores um, all the, the Landsat satellite data as well as the, the spectral indices. We're gonna pass that here to generate our sample, uh, generate our sample, uh, technically um, generate a sample and extract the values, the satellite values for each of the samples. So we're gonna use, you know, roughly 5,000 data points and spatial resolution scale here, you know, 30, uh, 30 meter and seeds one. I'll keep this as one for now. Um, and so add band LC. So this is gonna combine the land cover as well as the all the uh, response variables here and then extract values for each of these 5,000 points. And next, um, you know, to split the data into training and validation, we're gonna uh, apply a random column here, and then we're gonna split the data to a training data, and 80% of the data, and on 20% of the data for validation here. And then the main uh, thing here is just we're gonna uh, apply, 
you know, the classification algorithm, which we're going to use a random forest classification and train the model based on our training data here, uh, train sample, right? And then the features is train sample and class properties label, which is, you know, the land cover type and input properties. These are the response variables uh, where we want to use to pray to make the prediction, which is, you know, the, the, the Landsat, you know, surface reflectance bands, as well as NDVI and MND, uh, MNDWI. And then we have trained our model. Next, let's apply our model, which is image classify. Um, trained classifier. This is our model. We're going to apply the image and then classify. This will generate um, uh, an image um, uh, uh, of the predicted land use land cover map. So let's go ahead and execute this. Yeah, next, um, you know, to make a visualization, let's create a dictionary of uh, the names and also the colors. Um, so um, this is the names of the different land cover classes ranging from water, trees to rangeland and the respective, you know, color codes for all of these um, land cover classes. So let's execute that. We're going to use this in, in, our, um, in our visualization later. So and so now we have our model here. Um, and let's just create a visualization parameter, which is the dictionary of colors here. We have created a dictionary here, so we're calling that. And then classify 2017, so this is our model. And also we're mapping the, the, um, the E3 uh, land cover data, which we used for training. We're going to map that as well here. And then let's just go ahead and execute that. So yeah, so this is our, um, we can uh, toggle that here. So this is the satellite data and this is um, our classification. So we've uh, technically converted this Landsat image uh, based on our model uh, into, um, you know, land cover classification, you know, water body, agriculture, vegetation cover here. Uh, last thing is in case you're interested to uh, export this uh, land cover classification or model based um, land cover data into your Google Drive. You can use this bit of code here uh, by using a batch export image to your Google Drive. You can execute that. I've already done so. So you can execute uh, this bit of code um, to um, push the data into your uh, uh into your Google Drive rather and then from Google Drive you can download it uh, to your local machine uh, to um, use it in any other ge geospatial uh, standard GIS software to visualize it you know map it uh, you know do further analysis whatnot